Hello everyone, this is Xin Shi from Georgia Tech. I am going to present Learning to Stop While Learning to Predict. This is a joint work with Han Jun from Google Brain, Yu and Xin from Kaust, and Li from Georgia Tech. In the first five minutes of this talk, I will first highlight the core messages in this paper, so that you can have a high-level idea of what this work is about. After that, I will go into more details to present the concrete formulation and algorithms. This paper talks about deep learning models with dynamic depth. That is, instead of using a fixed number of layers in the architecture, in a dynamic depth model, the number of layers can be different for different input samples. For example, for the first image, we can propagate it for four layers, and for the second image, we can choose to propagate it through two layers only. Now the question is, why do we need this type of dynamic model? Here we present our motivation. In meta-learning, MAMO used gradient descent steps to adapt a common initialization, theta zero, to new tasks. However, Depending on the similarity of the new task to the old tasks, or in a more realistic task in balanced setting, the number of gradient steps for each task should be different. For example, here task 1 has fewer samples than task 2. Then it may require fewer adaptation steps to avoid overfitting. And task 2 may need more steps for a better accuracy. The second motivation comes from data-driven algorithm design. Recently, there are many works that use deep learning to learn an algorithm, or use an algorithm layer in deep learning model. We notice that for traditional iterative algorithms, there is usually some stop criteria that, det that decides whether to stop and output a result. For example, this stop criteria could be convergence, or one can use the validation set to select the result. However, in many current works that combines algorithms and deep learning, they unroll and truncate the algorithm to a fixed number of iterations, which may not be an optimal choice. There are some other motivations. For example, in image denoising task, it is expected that images with different noise level may need different number of denoising steps to obtain a clean image. In the image recognition task, early exist is proposed either to improve the computational efficiency or to avoid overthinking. To summarize, we are interested in this type of model. It has two components. The first component is a predictive model f theta that transforms the input x to a sequence of state x1 to xt. The second component is a stop policy, pi phi. It observes the state xt sequentially and determines whether to stop at layer t. This sequential stop policy, pi phi, can induce a variational stop time distribution, q phi. It is a variational distribution that gives the probability of stopping at the teeth layer. We will only use the sequential policy, pi, to sequentially determine whether to stop. However, this induced variational distribution, q phi, can help us design the training objective and also the algorithm. OK, now, given this model, the question is how to optimize it. It is obvious that for a different predictive model, f theta, the optimal stopping strategy will be different. So these two components are tightly coupled together. How to learn both of these two components efficiently and also optimally, it is a challenging question, and it is the main goal of this paper. Now we introduce how we optimize these two components. We proposed a principled and effective training procedure. First, we introduce a joint training objective of these two components. Many current works do not have a joint objective, but learn the two components separately. Then, we introduce an oracle stop time distribution. That is, 
Given each predictive model f theta, there is an optimal stop time distribution q star. We call this optimal stop time distribution as the oracle. This oracle requires the information of the labels, so we cannot use it during the testing phase. However, we can make use of this oracle for the training. We decompose the training procedure into two stages. In the first stage, we use the oracle distribution along with the predictive model f theta to train the optimal theta. The, the advantage here is that the training of the theta is aware of the existence of a stopping policy. In the second stage, we minimize the KR divergence between the oracle and the variational policy QT, so that QT can mimic the behavior of the oracle. To summarize, our training algorithm has the following advantages. First, our method is principled, since the two components are optimized towards a joint objective. Second, our method is tuning three. The weights of different layers in the loss are given by the oracle distribution automatically. Third, it is efficient, since we do not need to update theta and phi alternatively. We optimize theta in the first stage and then phi in the second stage. Besides, this method is generic, which can be applied to a diverse range of applications. Finally, we provide better understanding of the designed method and algorithm. We provide a variational-based perspective for understanding the model and the training. And we present a reinforcement learning perspective for understanding the learning of the stop policy. Finally, we validate the effectiveness of our method by several experiments, including learning to solve sparse recovery problems, task imbalanced meta learning, image denoising, and image recognition. Now we can get into more details of the concrete formulations. The predictive model f theta is a typical t layer deep model that generates a sequence of embeddings x1 to xt. The stopping policy pi phi observes the input x and the teeth layer output and then determines whether to stop. As mentioned before, the q phi is the variational stop time distribution induced by pi. The concrete definition is given here. This product is the probability of not stopped before t. Q3 can help us design the training objective and also the algorithm. Next, we present the joint optimization objective. It is defined as the loss in expectation over t, where this expectation is taken over the stop time distribution Q3. And there is an entropy term that regularizes the distribution. Beta is the coefficient. In this paper, we present a variational based perspective of this objective. More precisely, we can view the stop time t as a latent variable in the graphical model, and the label y is the observation. The essence of phase framework is to estimate the posterior, that is the probability of the stop time t given the observation y. We can actually show that if the loss is negative log likelihood, and the prior is said to be uniform distribution, then minimizing the joint objective is equivalent to maximizing the beta VAE objective. If you are not familiar with beta VAE, it is actually the same as the evidence lower bound, elbow, if you take beta equals to one. This variational based perspective help us better design and understand the training algorithm. Our training algorithm has two stages. As mentioned before, we will make use of the oracle. Given any predictive model f theta, the oracle is the optimal stop time distribution by maximizing the beta VAE objective. So this oracle is a distribution that depends on theta. When beta equals to one, we can see that this oracle is actually the true posterior of the latent variable t given the observation y and x. Different from many Bayesian problems, here this posterior is computationally tractable. However, it requires the observation of the label y, which is not available during the test time. 
but we can use it for training. So in the first training stage, we optimize the parameters in the predictive model theta by maximizing the beta VAE objective with theta and the with f theta and the oracle. In the gray box, we can see the training objective. There is a sum over the losses of all layers, but these losses are weighted by the oracle q. So we don't need to hand tune the weights of each layer because it's given by the oracle. And for different input sample x, the weights over the layers will be different. The second training stage is to mimic the oracle using the variational distribution q phi. Since the oracle requires the observation of the true label y, we can only approximate it using the variational distribution q phi. Here we minimize the KR divergence between the oracle and the variational distribution. We choose to use the forward KL because we find that if we use reverse KL, there is the mode collapse issue. In our case, the mode collapse issue will give us a distribution that concentrates on one layer where the average performance is the best, instead of a more spread out stopping time. Therefore, we use the forward KL. Besides, we notice that if we use the reverse KL, it is equivalent to solving the maximum entropy reinforcement learning, where the sequential stop policy will be learned by optimizing the expected reward. Now we will present the experimental result. The first experiment is a sparse recovery problem. This problem can be solved by traditional optimization algorithms such as ISTA. Recently, there are many works on data-driven algorithm design that aims at learning a better algorithm from data to better solve this sparse recovery problem. And Listat is one of the most popular ones. So we build a model on top of Lista called Lista Stop. It allows the original Lista to dynamically choose which iteration to stop. This result in Table 2 shows a significant improvement. The second experiment is task imbalanced meta learning. In the few short learning task, each task contains k shots. In the task imbalanced scenario, the number of shots in each task can be different. That means some tasks have more samples and some have less samples. Built on top of memo, we propose memo stop, which can learn how many adaptation steps are needed for each task. The results on benchmark data set show that learning the adaptation stop time can improve the performance. Besides, we also test its performance on the vanilla setting, where all tasks have the same number of examples. There is still improvement, but not as significant as the imbalanced setting. The third experiment is image noising. Built on top of DNCNN, which is one of the most popular models for image denoising, we propose DNCNN stop, which can learn which layer to stop for different images. The model is trained on images with noise level 35 to 55. The noise levels 65 and 75 are not observed during the training. However, it is surprising that our variant DNCNN stop can perform much better than the baselines on this unobserved noise level. This shows that the stop policy can better model the variation in terms of noise level change. In our paper, we also present some interesting observations on the image recognition tasks. If you are interested in it, please check the details in our paper. Besides, we will also release the GitHub code for reproducing all the experiments. Thank you for listening.